Hello, and welcome to Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. This series of short, skill-based videos is brought to you by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service's National Conservation Training Center in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. If you have a couple of minutes, pull up a chair and pick up a new conservation skill or maybe refresh an old one on topics ranging from fish culture to bird identification to stream restoration. Enjoy. Hello, my name is Matthew Patterson and I'm a course leader at the National Conservation Training Center and I'm going to lead you through this skill exercise today. So what's the topic for today? Today we're talking about estimating basal area of the riparian zone using a cruise prism. So your first question is probably, okay, what's basal area? Well, basal area in a very basic sense is just a measure of tree density. In this case, we're interested in the riparian zone. More specifically, it's a sum of the cross-sectional areas of live trees measured at four and a half feet above the ground per unit area. So let's look at that in a graphical sense. Imagine this plot here is one acre that you can see and distributed amongst that one acre are a series of trees of different sizes. Now let's imagine for a second that all of these trees have been cut at four and a half feet above the ground. So all we're seeing are the stumps, but they're all four and a half feet high. So this is how we would get basal area. We would take the area of that stump or area of a circle in this case, and it's just pi r squared. And then we would do that for all of the trees in that one acre area. And then we would add all those areas together and we would get square foot of basal area per acre. Okay, so why do we care about basal area and why do we care about it in the riparian zone? Well, when we look at sort of standard indices of riparian habitat quality, some of the things that are included in that are the width of, of the riparian buffer. For example, how, how big is that buffer? How wide is it? The percent canopy cover, how much closure that we see above the stream, and then also the basal area of the riparian zone. So it's included oftentimes in these indices of the quality of the riparian habitat. Now, why do we care about healthy riparian zones from a stream perspective or a stream restoration perspective? Well, first of all, riparian zones provide wildlife habitat, not just terrestrial habitat, but also aquatic habitats. They provide bank stabilization to the stream and prevent erosion. And they also help to control the water temperature, keeping things cool. The cooler the water temperature, the more oxygen it can carry, and the better it is for aquatic organisms that live there. So, how do I estimate basal area? That's our topic today. Well, if we went back to our plot, we could go out and measure the diameter of these, all of these trees at the four and a half foot mark, estimate the basal area that way, and then add them all up. But we want something, we're more interested in stream restoration than maybe forest ecology. So we want a quick way that we can do this because we're doing all other kinds of measurements for, for stream restoration. So what we want to use is a cruise prism. You can see this gentleman here holding up a cruise prism, but how does it work? Well, a cruise prism is a piece of glass that has an angle to it, so it refracts light in different ways. So you look through it with your eyes, and this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see that it's gonna offset the trees that you're looking at. Okay, so it offsets it, so what? Now what do I do? Well, this is where our skill demonstration comes in exactly how to estimate basal area. And this is a several step process. The first step is if you're doing stream restoration, you're probably out there doing transects anyway, either to do cross sections or to do pebble counts, those kinds of things. Well, use one of those transects, but extend the transect line about 15 feet from the shoreline uh, and set an observation point. And in this case, the observation point that you get 15 feet up, just put a pin flag there. 
Step two is to hold that cruise prism directly over that pin flag and to hold it out a comfortable distance from your eye. Step three is to pivot 360 degrees around that pin flag. Now this is where a common mistake happens, so I want to go into a little bit more detail here. As you pivot, your body should move and the cruise prism should stay over top of the flag the whole time as opposed to standing over the pin flag and rotating the cruise prism. Let's look at that in a little more graphical form. This is what you want it to look like. You can see this person, the pin flag there is in red. The person is walking around the pin flag and keeping the cruise prism right over top of the flag. So that's a, that's a good thing. This is what you don't want. You don't want to be standing over the pin flag and having the cruise prism rotate around that circle. As you can imagine, you're going to, the cruise prism is now going to be different distances from the trees, and that's not what you want for your estimate. Step four, as you're looking through that prism, assess all the trees in that 360 degree view and determine if the trees are in, out, or borderline. What does that mean? I'm going to show you a series of pictures here. You can see in this case, the tree is offset by the cruise prism, but it's not completely offset. There is still overlap between the tree and the image in the prism. So this is considered in. In this picture, you can see that the image in the prism is completely separated or offset from the actual tree in the background. This tree is out. And in this case, the image in the cruise prism is kind of borderline. You can see there's a little bit of overlap at the bottom. It's kind of borderline at the top. In this case, for estimation purposes, we're going to count every other one of these that is borderline. In a real case, if it's borderline, you would measure from the pin flag to the tree, measure the diameter at breast height, and do a calculation to determine if it's in or out. In our case, we're just going to count every other one. Finally, you calculate basal area. This is the sum total of the end trees and every other borderline tree. And then you multiply by the prism factor. You can see in the top, this is a factor of pin prism. So here's the equation. Basal area is the number n plus the number borderline divided by 2. Again, every other one times the prism factor. So let's imagine in our example we counted 10 end trees, 8 borderline trees, and our prism factor was 10. So we have 10 n plus 8 borderline divided by 2 times our prism factor of 10. That's 10 plus 4 times 10 for a total basal area of 140 square feet per acre. Want to learn more about this skill or other skills related to it? I suggest signing up for the National Conservation Training Center's Stream Habitat Measurement Techniques course. And if you hang on after this, I'll walk you through how to find this course on our website. So thanks for joining us. If you have questions about this skill or any other skill related to stream restoration, or have any questions about National Conservation Training Center courses in general, you can reach me at the email and phone number below. Thank you. Your best bet for finding our courses is to Google National Conservation Training Center. Click on the link and then type in stream habitat measurement techniques. Click on the PDF. And you can see it includes a description, objectives, target audience, and down at the bottom, upcoming courses. Thanks. Thanks again for joining us for Conservation Skills in 10 Minutes or Less. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, or hit the subscribe button, share this video with a friend, or even check out one of the many other skill-based videos we have in this series. Have a great day, and always remember, 
The beautiful thing about learning is that no one can take it away from you.